All right, we are back. 2020 race season. Well to ask San Juan. Five kilometers to go. Now we have the absolute classics here. Hodge, Huleg, whatever his name is here, obviously with Quick Step. Then you have Boris Hansgrohe, who are riding for the big man Peter Sagan. Then you have Manuel Belete for Androni Sidamet, the team with hundreds of thousands of sponsors. But anyway, Vuelta San Juan, if you don't know it, it's a race in a region of Argentina. It's about six stages wrong. People, uh, long, sorry, people always get popped for doing EPO and stuff because they beat Alaphilippe up a climb. Uh, and then you have about five or uh, three or four sprint stages um, this year. You always get some decent names. Sagan normally starts the season here unless he gets paid a couple mil to go to Tour Down Under. And obviously it's new kits and everything else. Like we've got Bardiani in that lovely pink kit. Don't know what they're doing. Rally are here. UAE are here as well. Um, Gaviria has turned up, which is always a... Uh, Good to see, and uh, at this moment in time, the running looks pretty safe, pretty pretty good. But obviously, it's well to San Juan, so they can't actually make stages that are safe. Um, but you know, we do love to see it. At this moment in time, you really just think, what is everyone doing at the front? There's no need to be on the front. The road is very easy to move up. It's very wide. It stays wide, and yeah. Uh, this is Carlos Betancourt, who uh, rumor has it weighs 70 kilos at the moment. Now, that, the boy's good. He's got unreal fitness. If he lost like if he was as lean as, like, you know, proper boys um, who would go for GC, he would destroy. Um, there are about 12 Argentinian squads here as well. I don't really understand each region seems to get. Seems to get a slot. Um, but look at Quick Step uh, just behind Androni. And those are the people that you really want to watch out for. Because we all know what's going to happen. They're going to work. Everyone do all the work. All the work. All the work. And then, at the end, they're just going to mug, mug them up the line. You don't have a Movistar moving up. They're just protected for GC. They don't have a sprint. But there we go. Boom. Crash. Crash on the left-hand side of the road, and that was huge. Remco got involved. A couple other people did. Um, there's no information. This I've literally straight after the race finished. There's not much information on the cycling news website, which is a bit disappointing. Um, but yeah, it was a touch of wheels on the right-hand side of the thing. Then he swerved in, and then caused another touch of wheels, and then uh, the Androni rider went down, which is uh, good, which is not good at all. And obviously, it's absolute chaos. Um, and 3k to go, you know, you're going 50, 55, 60k an hour, something like that. So obviously crashing at that speed is um, not very pleasant, as I can attest. Um, so yeah, obviously we would love to see the race, but if we go back to it, 2.9k to go, and uh, nothing's really happened. Normally, if you know, if you were an opportunity rider, you think this could be the time to go, um, because obviously sprint trains are slightly uh, reduced. I don't know why they're spraying water at riders, so that he does attack. We then go back to the... Um, to the crash, I don't think there's too much reason to dwell on it, and it's a bit grim, like, who wants to go watch people hurt themselves, but, um, anyway, it is what it is, um, this is a very flat run in, it's just, I don't understand this, the Welter San Juan, you're just like, you literally could have the finish line anywhere down here, but no, we're gonna have it right on the corner, there's the crash, getting helicopter shot, you can't, you can't see anything, so, um, there's no real, there's no real need. My computer is running out of battery. I can't get charger. So if I do die, that would be a little bit disappointing. But anyway, 2.1 kilometers ago. So we lost 800 meters. I don't think anything groundbreaking happened. And I just want you to watch the Israel side can carry on the right hand side. Al Philippe's there. And he does a little on head noise. Like 2K go right. We need to start moving up. And Al Philippe decides that he is a boxer. So he's going to come up and start nudging people. Now, this is Caleb Ewan with Jasper Phillipson. We all know Caleb Ewan would get disqualified, but no apparent reason. Um, obviously, you can watch last year's video about that and uh, make your great insights that I really love hearing about. Um, and yeah, so right hand side, get squeezed out, coffee. They've got Christophe Laporte. I rate him pretty highly, to be fair. He always does well. But um, unfortunately, um, with Viviani coming to the team, he's not going to get too many opportunities. Uh, Movistar again, sorting everyone out. But Bora comes to the front now. And you're like, just don't put everyone, like put one guy on the front and then let other people go behind so that you can come from the back with more speed. And quick step do this very well. They, you know, they'll, they'll let someone else, they might put a rider on the front, but they won't put the team on the front to one kilometer to go. And in one kilometer to go, you've got to get got to get your three riders ahead. And Daniel, our super teammate, is uh, is there. And look at quick step. They've just kept together. There's four of them. Alaphilippe's going to start going up. And he, he starts getting pretty aggressive with the elbows. I don't really know why. Um, I guess there was the banner there, 1k to go, but it did seem like they had enough time. And now it's really starting to stay at strong You've got UAE on the left hand side moving up uh, for Fernando Gaviria. And then you have them um, in the middle, you have Israel Cycling Academy. Um, you can see their luminous blue Giro Synth helmet and a helmet which I do do like uh, significantly. And now, quick step, we've got three riders to go. Bora on the front. Sagan's disengaged from the lead out. And I, I think he likes this. You know, he likes just sitting on the wheel of Hodge. Hodge obviously is the favoured man. Um, but with 500 metres to go, you can tell that. 
quick step now this rider does not do a long enough time he goes from 500 meters to 400 he needed to go to like 300 and then and then his final lead out man just left him but anyway on the front it's starting to slow up you can see people starting to free wheel hodge goes and just doesn't have that kick that sagan comes on the inside then it gets chaotic they go round a corner don't know why barbier on the left hand side is absolutely flying comes around seated and it's just chaotic i don't know which idiots decided that to have that as the uh stage finish but anyway we'll we'll read out the results so we had rudy barbier in first position Belletti, thomas conte for the municipal I, I can't say it sorry it's too too late um milano hodge sagan Mikein, Wackerman, uh, Gaviria, and Cyril Lemoyne. So it was uh, an interesting thing. So we'll, we'll try and watch some overhead overhead footage. I'm doing this live because it was, it was a bit hard to download this video. Um, but you can see this is obviously the finish. But I re would really like to see some overhead shots because really Barbier seemed like he came from a long way back and was, you know, he is just carrying more speed. I think potentially uh, potentially this footage could be um, could be good. So that was the, that was the finale. I don't know why... Why would you finish like under a motorway or a pedestrian bridge round a corner? It makes no sense. The UCI need to sort it out because you just cannot allow these races to happen. So obviously Hodge went to uh, yeah, 200 meters to go now, but Hodge has already launched for it. You know, five seconds before this. So again on the right hand side, it's gonna get pinched. Um, so that's not looking good. Then you've got Milano. I don't know why Gaviria is so dissing, like not there. Belletti starts coming on the outside, you think outside, no way, because it's got long to go, but Barbie is just in the saddle, properly aero, like a track sprinter, a track sprinter he is, and, um, and yeah, he comes around a lot of gaps, a lot of gaps, but um, yeah, I think Remco seems to be okay, um, I really hope he does well, because everyone seems to love Remco having a ball, um, but anyway, cheers for watching, I hope you did enjoy, and um, I'm back with the race footage, because I know everyone loves it.